Right. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever it is. <laughs> Wherever you are, welcome back to the Couple School Podcast. I can't believe this is episode number nine. Nine. Number nine. As usual, I'm joined by the lady of self love herself, entrepreneur, guru, as we've just been discussing. <laughs> Shame <Shermaine> Lawrence. Hi, guys. <laughs> hey. I have to take a sip first before we even get into the subject here because we're talking about trust. But we're switching up the order of things, switching up a little piece today. So, fortunately, a lot of you have found this podcast quite interesting and now we're starting to get people to write in directly. So, I thought what we'd do is change change the gist of things, just, just <laughs> slightly. So, we're still partnering and leading with the subject of trust, but we've, got, we've had a question. Well, it's more like a scenario. So... I've been with my partner for three years and have recently discovered that he has been talking to another woman. I don't think anything physically has happened yet, but I don't want, but I, but I don't know what to do about it. Should I confront him? Should I confront him? I don't want to lose my relationship. You look at me. Yeah, because I want you to go first. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna sit back and you sip should and enjoy always it. confront something that makes you feel uncomfortable at all times. Um, I think it's irrelevant how long you've been with someone. I think it's relevant, irrelevant where you, whether you want to save your relationship or not. It's just a conversation. If he hasn't come forward with the information that he's talking to someone and you have acquired that information, there, that is a breach of trust. And therefore, she should definitely speak to him about it confront him no yes <laughs> yes I'm, I'm, I, I have my answer really lined up and ready to go until you touched <laughs> on the subject and used that lovely get out of jail free card word called acquired <laughs> that information like you've been snooping that's what you've been doing um, look I'm a firm believer in the saying that if, that if, if you go looking for smoke you will find fire um, and I think in this particular scenario here, I do think you should confront him, by the way. I do think you should confront him. Um, I think you should choose how you do it carefully because at the moment, by the sounds of things, by you confronting him, you're actually going to be admitting to something here um, and saying, right, well, you went about getting the information by how, you know? And I think there's that whole subject of breaking trust and breaking trust here, like, you know, which one which one which one which one's the worst well one? that's assuming that she's not just like they don't have a relationship that she could just go in his phone or she can you know it might not have been that she's gone snooping mm -hmm. she might have acquired that information from someone else you know it could be an email that she has access to like you know, some relationships people have access to the partner's phone yeah. they have access to the partner's email so she may have just come across a name and did, and then snooped in the name, <laughs> and, but, then and then on the snooped names. on then the conversation. On the but okay. the fact of the matter still remains: is it's it's something that she's uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. She doesn't go into any detail as to what the conversation is or isn't. Yeah. Or whether it's platonic or whether it's not, or whether it's leading or like anything like that. So we don't really know. But based on that situation, the moment you feel uncomfortable, you should broach the the subject with your partner, regardless of whether you're snooping or not. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, as I said, I do think that she should confront a partner, I think you, but I think you should also brace yourself for the comeback that is likely yeah, to come Yeah, but this is the thing way. I don't like when people do that. You're not going to come back. I'm, I'm asking you a question. You can't then answer a question with a question. No, no, but I'm, I'm, if this was me, it wouldn't be like, well, not even this is for me, because it would be, but like, it's not a matter of answering the question with a question. But you still have to answer to the fact that you were snooping. As yeah, well. when I'm done dealing with this bit first. Yeah, but I, I think, <laughs> and this is however you have. I'm going to use your word acquired the information, <laughs> um, and I know on the end here, and I think that's the real fear that you've got here is you don't want to lose your relationship. So I'm guessing that aside from this indiscrepancy, we'll call it that. Um, your relationship has been good, pure, and and and, and has been and fundamentally been good to you and a source of happiness. You know, when it comes to these sorts of things here and you're approaching a subject like this, I think you have to approach it with the end in mind. You have to have decided what it is, is are your possible endings and that be the basis on how you begin the said conversation. So if it is that you want to, your objective here is to find out and if possible, preserve your relationship, then you're going to need to approach that conversation in a way that is not likely to forge the end of your relationship and it's going to give 
both parties an opportunity to explain themselves. Basically, what I'm saying is don't lead with a tag. Yeah, basically. Yeah. It can easily go downhill with emotions being all over the place. Yeah. And the other thing as well is to is you're likely to open up a, a can of worms that you think you need to be prepared for as well because if something is missing, and I do think, find that most people want to get to the nitty-gritty of going through the whole there's another person sneaking, seeping in, or there's DMs that have been found, or there's extracurricular activity going on. It tends to find that there is when it's when that's happened to a happy situation, it tends to be that something has been retracted, subtracted, or is missing mm-hmm. um, by the other person, which has now caused them to start paying attention to other things. So it may be that although you've discovered this incident, this thing that's going on. Um, it may be that when you speak to him that the he explains that the trigger points to that was because something that you've changed or something that's bit that has changed in your relationship um, and be prepared to discuss that as well what do you think oh you're biting your lip <laughs> uh, I get my shield out in a minute I don't disagree with anything you're saying I just it's a trigger point for me when we talk about like someone having to broach something they're uncomfortable with and then someone comes back with, yeah, but it's because this, 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 this. I think that is always going to lead to a real difficult conversation when actually I just want to ask you about this particular situation. Why is this happening? Oh, because, you know, you're not giving me enough sex or because you don't look as good as you used to or because I want to go out and have friends and I want to do, I can have female friends and all this kind of stuff. (laughs) Like, it's like, it that can kind of get a female's backup when actually you haven't come to me to have a conversation about these things that you're feeling or you're missing or that's been subtracted. But what if he has? But but we don't know if he has. But the idea, but you're, no, the no, assumption let's, can't let's, be that he has. No, but let's assume both sides. So in the sense of the sense of he hasn't. Yeah. Then I kind of get what you're saying. I, I kind of yeah. In the sense that he hasn't then it's, it's very triggering to then go, oh yeah, so it's because of the da 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 Because you didn't come to me with open dialogue to say, this is the issues or whatever, whatever. And then in the sense that he has, if you've then ignored that and there's been no work on that, then obviously then there's reasons for, well, I don't think there's reasons, but there's reasons for why. No, I, don't, I don't think there's reasons for the choice, the choice. Mm-hmm. to start to play away because which, whichever way you look at it whether it's the deed hasn't been done or nothing's been touched and it's a conversation that's leading somewhere um, or things have actually happened you've just made a choice to step outside of your house mm-hmm. so I don't I don't I'm not saying that there are reasons for the step out but I'm saying that there is within said relationship if, if situations get to a point where things are aired and they're not they're not dealt with sometimes so even even when there are valid reasons for it it doesn't discount the fact that someone's missing something yeah and i think a lot of people mistake that because they sort of tail it off and go okay right well it's not this because of that yeah and whilst you can accept that it's not this because of that it doesn't change the fact that your one person is missing that and that missing depending on what that is and if we take the sex subject, say, for argument's sake, if somebody, and we've talked about this in previous previous casts, if someone's sexual frequency, ideal frequency, is three times a week, and in the beginning of the relationship, they got three times a week, and then something happens, or time goes on, and whatever it is that's gone on, and all of a sudden now you're at once a fortnight, then whilst there may be a reason for that re- reduction, mm. it doesn't take away from the fact that that reduction has caused a gap or has caused the other person to be missing something. Now, they may have made the wrong... Now, this instance here, if that is the case, he's made the wrong choice or decision to fill that gap by a conversation by other means. Yeah. You know, get that completely. But I think a lot of the times within relationships, and this has happened in the previous with, with, with my own past, you know, you'll articulate something. There's a, there is a valid reason for it. You know, so that mm-hmm. discussion goes on and, and the reason is understood and then the conversation stops there. But the need hasn't been hasn't hasn't expired so it's yeah. still there so that itch still goes on and it gets louder and then if it's not it, it just builds frustrations mm-hmm. and builds frustrations so i just think that you know you have to be when you when you approach a subject like that you have to be 
willing to take the rebuttal that's going to come back. Yeah, because I that's agree what with we're that. We're asking for as a conversation about it, so it can't just be expecting you to be have you to right. The floor is yours, and you can go along and yeah. just relay what it is to upset you without being ready to hear what's upset him along the way as well. I kind of feel like depending on how she acquired that information if she snooped mm -hmm. that means that there's a breach of trust before i don't believe that someone just goes snooping for any for no reason there's some air of uncomfortableness or something that doesn't feel right from a female perspective for you to think hmm let me go snooping you don't just snoop for no reason. I don't, I, don't, think, I don't believe people do that. I don't think people snoop for no reason, but I do think that the reason for snooping is not necessarily with it contained within the relationship that they're in. Hmm. I think a lot of the times when people go snooping it's because they've got a past of hurt that they've not got over and are wearing like a security blanket. So when something smells like something from the past, they mm -hmm. assume it's that and therefore go and dig in with the same passion levels as what they have from all this accumulated hurt from hmm. the past. Um, I'm a great believer in, in as best you can and I know we're human and, and, it, and it can be a bit of an issue and, tr and difficulty trying to do but to start each relationship with a clean slate yeah. and that involves a lot of dialogue a lot of conversation between you and your other half to let them know and to continuously talk to them I think we take our other halves for granted and say we've said it once mm -hmm. so they should remember yeah. you know? we've said it once so I've explained, I've explained how that hurt me I've explained how this, so you should just know. But we're human, things go on. It wasn't their personal thing. They, they don't want to hurt you, obviously. But it wasn't their personal history, so they're not automatically going to remember it 100% of the time. And the conversation needs to be fluid, I think, right away throughout the relationship. You know, just to make sure if this is still important to you, you know, that the other person still understands it, it's still important to you. Yeah. I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. How trusting do you need to be in a relationship? Personal hat or coach hat? Let's do both. So let's do personal hat first because that's the one that's got all the fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, I don't like the word trust. Okay, interesting. I don't really like the word trust. This is just a personal thing. Okay. I prefer the word faith and I think they're two completely different things. Uh, I, explain, go on. I'm, I'm... So I, for me, I feel like I have faith that the person that I'm with is going to behave in the way that I would want or that we've discussed or that's expected. Okay. But for me, I don't think I can say, oh, you know, I trust that this person... The idea of trust is this idea that... Like, this, that, I, this person could never do this to me. I don't like that. Fee I don't like that. That's not true. Okay. I believe that people can do whatever they want to do and everything is a choice. Mm -hmm. Do I trust that someone is not going to make the choice? Mm, I have faith they're not going to make the wrong choice. But I don't think I can put all my pennies into a basket. Even for the best behaved person, the most experienced person, the most loved up person, I do not believe that. Because I can guarantee you, if Rihanna turned around and said to Jeff, let's go, he's going. <laughs> 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 I would I would have faith that he would make the right choice, but I mean it's Rihanna. <laughs> like, would you forgive him? Here's, here's I would forgive like, him. Pull past Rihanna. I would, I would Jeff, forgive are you him. Watching? Pull I past would, Rihanna. I would forgive you. <laughs> no, but do you get? I mean, that's that's my my whole thing is this whole how trust work. I think you have to have faith in your partner, and you have to lead with faith, and that you just move that way and I think that I feel much more comfortable with that idea because I do feel like trust is I just don't know I make it feels free flowing to me I don't like it I feel like I have faith that you're going to do the right thing if you don't then you don't we're human and I think humans mess up okay and so I don't like the idea of the word trust I think but that's per that's a personal view no I quite I, I find it quite interesting I quite I quite like the breakdown between the two words because when we talk about trust it's almost like i've given you something that thou shalt not break and once you break it then that's it so yeah. like it's it's like it's like a kit kat you can't put a kit kat back together again it's yeah. an analogy you know once you break it you break it if you have faith in someone 
it almost gives a I say a margin for error, that's the wrong phrase to use, but it gives them a it gives them a pace where you're like, right, well, this can be repaired, provided based on what it is yeah. that you've 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 been unf- unfaithful um, with. Okay, interesting. What about when coach hat on? Um with a coach hat on, I think how I'd approach it just a little bit softer, you know. I'd be softer with my coach hat on. <laughs> but I'd, you ha- Isn't it funny how we like that? <laughs> you have to be comes soft. to your personal life, you're like, no, <laughs> I will die. But when it comes to like the coach hat, you know, diplomatic. With the coach hat on, I think, I think you have to. I'm replacing the word faith with trust with my coach hat, right? Okay. So I do think you have to. Um, you just have to. You do have to be trusting. I don't think it can work if you don't believe that your partner's going to do the right thing. So you kind of have to have trust. But I think trust is also built upon the time. When you meet somebody, you don't necessarily be like, I trust they're going to do... Like, you don't know. Like It's just a build-up of getting to know the person, them knowing who you are, you knowing who they are, having expect- expectations and goals for your relationship. And then I think that's what builds the trust and that builds that root. But, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. What about you? What, what, how trusting do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Which hat do I put on first? I'm juggling both. Um, I, think, I think if you take a look at the timeline for a relationship, I think you pay trust forward with faith. I think that's how mm-hmm. I see it. So when, the, when, you, when you get together with someone, you don't trust them because you don't fully know them. Mm-hmm. But you give them that trust on loan. You know, yeah. you give them that trust in the bars because if you don't then you're just leading the relationship with suspicions and if you lead the relationship with suspicions you're just building a, a, you're building your own bonfire which you're going to sit on royally at some point and then destroy it um, so I think in the beginning of the relationship you, you, you loan the person the trust to say right well these, these are the things I believe in and these are the things I want my relationship to stand by and this is how I, I I see myself as happy. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's another key aspect of it for me is that different relationships, because they're created by different individuals, have different rules. So different people's versions of breaking of trust differ wildly. You know, And so you have to have that conversation to begin with to let someone know, right, well, what is it? What is it that I would find untrustworthy? What would it that I would find unfaithful? What what are the boundaries and all the rest of it? Yeah. And then on the basis of you of that agreement that we are now in a line, you give that person a certain degree of okay, I'm I'm going to loan you trust now that we're going to do this thing together, and you are, I'm going to have faith <laughs> that <laughs> you're not going to break that. Yeah. You know? I think you're one hundred percent right. As a relationship goes on, you build trust based on those based on affirming situations. Yeah. You know? So situations where trust could have been broken or people could have been betrayed and they weren't, based on situations where someone has done what they said they were going to do, you know, where, they've, where they've said, I'm going to be here at six o'clock and they were there at six o'clock and you learn that you can rely on them. Yeah. Those are these things that, these are the actions that build trust, you know? Like it was, it's not so much the matter of remembering people's birthdays because anybody can do that, but remembering that Tuesdays are a difficult day for me. Like I watched um, a clip from, uh, what's her name? Baroness Karen Brady. She's the lady of, of The Apprentice. Mm-hmm. And Stephen, what's his name? Bartlett. Bartlett was interviewing her and she said that, um, he was talking about successful relationships and she was talking about her, her ex-husband and she was like, oh, he was never, he never did, she never really appreciated the great big um, gestures, but she appreciated when he, when he put Petra in her car. Yeah. You know? Because she knew that he was thinking about her and he'd taken her car out deliberately so she had one less thing to do the following day. Mm-hmm. And those are the actions that build trust mm-hmm. within the relationship. Um, I do think a relationship a relationship's currency is trust, faith, whatever label mm-hmm. you want to put on it. Because at the end of the day, you got into that relationship to become someone's priority, mm-hmm. for someone to place you as their priority, for them to place you as their priority, then you need to be important. Mm-hmm. You know? So you've got trust, you're trusting that, that, that your importance with them stands. And that's why I think infidelity and cheating and all, those, that, all, that, nothing, all that bad stuff, that's truthfully why it hurts so much. It's not necessarily... The action of someone having sex with someone else. Yeah. It's the fact that you said you weren't going to. Yeah. Right? And now you've put that person above me. 
Yeah. And that's what I think digs, digs out. Yes. Agreed. Hmm. Can it work if you hold back? So if you're holding back in a relationship, you're holding back the trust because you are not trusted. You're holding back the trust. Can it work? Um, I'm trying to play devil's advocate here. Um, no. No. <laughs> I was really I trying. I was trying, trying to, to think. Of, I was trying, trying to play devil's trying. advocate, but no, no. no. It, it, I don't think you can. I um, no. No, I completely agree. No, uh, and this is so. this is why I say about the faith in the, giving the trust in advance. Um, it's a trust is the currency of relate your relationship. Yeah. Without it, the house cannot stand. You have to agree what the boundaries of that trust are. Yes, what the rules of that trust are. Yes, but without it, you don't, you don't, you don't even have a friendship. How could you hold back trust, though? Oh, there are lots of people that do it all the time. They I mean, go into a relationship. I mean, you, it, maybe. I mean, I don't think you can purposely. I mean, I guess yes, you can actually. In the beginning of a relationship, I guess mm-hmm. if you have been hurt and you haven't dealt with that, and you go forward into a relationship expecting the trust to be broken. Yep not giving it out because you you just expect that to happen so yeah, yeah but then that's a very toxic approach anyway but and you know, not something that we would be advocating no not at all but i think it's actually the running standing norm which is why i don't think most relationships last because yeah watching um love island was quite an interest it's quite an interesting thing no i find it's my, my guilty pleasure <laughs> i won't admit it to karen well i've just admitted it to karen she used to make me watch it and now i choose to but like I like watching, I love watching shows where individuals interact with individuals mm-hmm. and where they're all trying to wear their different mask of this, that, and the other. But you can see right through it, and you can see the need and the fear and the insecurity and all the rest of it, and then the bravado that they slap over the top of it. Yeah. But there was a group, I can't remember what series ago, it was a couple of series ago, there was a group of, group of girls that were talking, and they were basically, you know, they were like, this is why. Like, I never trust, because I, I know that they're going to mess up. Mm. And it's that, that sentence there just inca- encapsulated why, to me, so many relationships don't last. Yeah. Because you're expecting it to fail. You never expected it to. You weren't willing, for whatever reason that's gone on in your past, to pay that trust forward and go, actually, you know what? Let's do yeah. the thing. And, and sometimes it's not even about their past. Sometimes it's just about everything's so negative about relationships I mean like every show on TV is a, is a dating show or yep. some type of falling in love show so of some type um, to the point where it's actually just getting boring like it's everything is about dating and so this is what's filling everybody's minds about okay so are we going to fall in love within six weeks of this show and oh it hasn't happened or he's supposed to like me but he likes someone else and oh my gosh he's broken my heart and now I have to move on to someone else it's like literally this this whole whirlwind of negative views on relationships and people when you cannot just meet somebody in six weeks and fall in love but this is this weird expectation that if I meet you and I like you and you like me we're supposed to just be together forever there's no like goal setting there's no talk of the future there's no planning it's just like oh you're pretty you're pretty <laughs> <laughs> Let's get together. Oh my gosh, you're so amazing. And it's just like, w- wait, where's the substance? Where's the groundwork? It's, that doesn't get done. No, because the groundwork happens after that. <laughs> <laughs> That's that favourite saying, isn't it? It's the honeymoon period. It's that period at the beginning where everybody's great and everything's fantastic. Yeah, you're supposed fantastic. to do that in the honeymoon period. Yeah, I know, but these shows aren't, aren't designed for that. These people, Which these, is why they fall apart. Yeah, but these people go into these shows... And I think a lot of them aren't actually looking for love, which is part of the problem because yeah. they're looking for their 15 seconds or 15 minutes, whatever it is mm-hmm. now, 30 minutes of fame, you know, and that's what they go onto the show leading with. And the problem is they actually bump into some individuals that genuinely want to find someone because they've been through so much yeah. nonsense. And so they've resorted to the show. Whereas some people chose the show because they wanted to show them their abs off when they're bikini because that's, you know, how they get onto Love Island and then <laughs> onto the next show and onto the, onto the next one. You know, I, there are so many dating shows. I mean, Love in the Dark, that um, Naked Attraction, that's funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just to name a, name a couple. Um, Married at First Sight, yeah. Love is Blind. Like, there's, there's so, there people are looking at so many different angles of this thing rather than just taking a look at it in its context and going, these are two people. Help them find a way to make, yeah. to run parallel. 
Yeah, no, and no. I feel like that's why we have so many issues in terms of people trusting and people because you're you're watching a lot of these things that are showing you push people together and then they break up. It's like, oh, see, he was into somebody else. or And it's like, you don't know each other. You haven't given each other a chance to know each other. To And then so they lead their next relationship with this person's going to do this, this person's going to do this, this person's going to do this. Mm-hmm. It's just, yeah, it's just a weird concept. It is, it is. I mean, just, li- just looking at them on TV, like, it's like car crash, isn't it? You're driving past it, you can't help but look to the right. But there's all these, all these different shows, and just, I feel, I feel genuine sorrow for some of the, some of the individuals, because when I look at them, I see their hurt, mm. and I, I see their fears, and I see their pain, and I see their pain played upon by producers that have put a show together that their job is to put a show together for TV, and then they dress it like you could, you know, find the love of your life, when it just really doesn't, it doesn't work that way. No. Nope. I've got a question for you. Mm. Who finds it least easy to trust men or women Mm-mm-mm. who finds it least, least easy to trust easy to trust women why I think um, I think oh, this is going to sound so bad <laughs> <laughs> coming for you today <laughs> you really are coming for me today um, <laughs> um it has been said Ooh, look, <laughs> that men cheat more yeah. and women tend to be the ones that have, that I guess they're more emotional. I don't know what that whole thing is. I don't necessarily believe they're most, more emotional to be fair, but women tend to get hurt more than men. Men, yeah, I just think it's the way. That's just what it is. I'm trying we're... to articulate how to say it, but for me... I think women find it harder to trust. They they have so much more to lose. I think women have way more to lose in relationships. Why? They just do. How? You can't just say they just do. They Why? do. I mean, okay, so women are the ones that have are, are still deemed to be the <clears throat> caregivers. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that are left with children. They're the ones that take time off for maternity leave. They're the ones that make less money. They're the ones that are only given access to a relationship if the man is the man's gives the relationship. Men oh. give access to relationships, women give access to sex. So mm. a, so for me, women are the ones that generally are, do worse off if a man cheats. Emotionally, she does worse off. Because men will get forgiven. Men, men will get forgiven, forgiven, but they don't necessarily forgive themselves. Men don't let loose the baggage, we carry it. I don't think that men, women hurt more than men. I think it's actually the opposite way around. It happens more frequently with women. Yes, I'd agree with that. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the depths of the pain when someone actually gets cheated on, I think men deal with it least well. Um, yeah. Yeah, but they're not accustomed to it as much as women are. Women, I think we, we touched on this earlier on. Women, I think, are more in touch with exploring their feelings after an event. Mm-hmm. So you guys will go through that. And that's why I say that men actually experience it worse because we don't unpack it. So if it happens again, it's you get hit with the same one and the new one, over. We're not allowed really to express. You know, you can't burst into tears in front of your friends at the pub and go, oh my God, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. Hurts. You, it would not be well received. You know, mm-hmm. so... You, you, you don't have that outlet so I think men suffer more in silence when it comes to cheating than women do I will get I'll fully on board I, with I don't you think I disagree of... I, I don't I don't think I disagree I do think I do I agree with everything you've just said um, but I still believe that women are, have get the worst end of the stick I think women are and they're expected to as well it's I like think, they're expected to I think women are expected to take on more responsibility after a breakup for sure because mm-hmm. you, know? you are you guys are deemed as a primary caregivers irrespective of whether or not the man wants it to be that way or not mm-hmm. and I think that's the other bit to chip that you have to throw in here is because there are a lot of guys out there that if they had their choice if they had their way 
they'd have taken the child at the end of the relationship and had him full time and been the primary prep caregiver. I know so many guys that take time off for, for maternity, straight paternity and and the kids' holidays and when the kids are sick and they're taking them to the hospital and they're taking them to the doctors, you know, that are fully involved and fully integrated mm-hmm. into the kids' lives. I think the law hasn't caught up with the stereotypes of of, of, of old day to match up where with where new parents are you know i fully take and i'm not taking anything away from obviously the gender pay gap that we're all aware is still there but let's face it there are a lot of powerful women out there and mm-hmm. a lot of powerful salaries out there doing a lot of powerful things mm-hmm. you know i but i know quite a few guys actually that are the the the, the lesser um income earners in the house mm-hmm. um versus their woman and that family dynamic works so strong and i highlight that just for the sake of saying right well the system that exists for when a relationship disintegrates is based 50 years prior and it's not up to speed with dealing with modern day breakups mm-hmm. you know? and how even just how things are distributed how things are broken down and said like there's a lot of guys out there that have lost their kids for a breakup when both parties neither party wanted it to happen that way mm-hmm. but because the way in which the law is constructed it had to during 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 the split and during the breakup mm-hmm. so I think there are a lot of things and rituals and patterns here that are old wounds that we're all carrying around that so to a certain extent some of those scenarios aren't that way anymore or certainly don't have to be if we push them for change. Yeah, I think it's much easier to push it for change this day and age. I think I think we, we need to catch up. The law actually doesn't withhold... That's another podcast anyway, but it, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't withhold men from doing those things it's just that they want money for it they want money for you to go through the system they want mm-hmm. you to go through the system the way and it shouldn't be that way it shouldn't be that way but i i do think that women um women tend to forgive and i think women tend to forgive because they are very good at looking at the whole picture whereas like if a man cheats a woman is looking at how that's going to affect the children the household the this that 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 the mortgage payments She's able to look at it and feel and weigh up the options of him not being there and him being there. Whereas men, I think, just do not see that. They just see the act. They see their woman in this position Mm -hmm. and they cannot see anything else. Men tend to not forgive. Yeah, I'm right. See, I told you I'm right 80% of the time. (laughs) Yeah, but I think this might be a part of your 20. Um... (coughs) I think I do think you're right in the sense of uh, for a guy you it's very difficult once something like that has happened for you to not to not see it. Men are very visual visual creatures, which is why page three and porn has been such a craze, you know, and, and mm. been such a multi trillion dollar industry. You know, because we are very visual creatures, our imaginations are set that way. So when something happens like that, so your your woman that you love and this little steps out and X, Y and Z happens, you see it in pictures. Mm-hmm. You, know, you see it in pictures it's not written in a novel which is why I, how I think women see it I don't think women necessarily see it as vividly as what a guy's imagination would paint it and as I said it's it's you're dealing with pain that's not just to do with today it's to do with however many years ago and it all comes bubbling to the surface and it can cause a reaction but I don't think that men aren't capable of taking a look at the whole picture and going right well you know I've got to take a look at this 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 and this and this and this but you have to incorporate that aspect into it. We will both see pain or that situation in a different world, in a different way. And yeah, I don't think, I, I, yeah, you know, I agree. I don't think men can go past it. Because <laughs> I don't think I could. I don't think I could. I'm, I'm taking the coach right off now and I'm looking at myself. Could, <laughs> You're like, no, could, no what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, but that's what I'm saying. I'd see it like a movie. Like, and I'd see it every time I see you. Yeah. You know? Every time I see you, I would see that situation. I'd see that dude and it would... It would it would boil like no other. Like yeah. It's a volcano that's unstoppable. Like the rage that will go when it's, it, it, there's no there's no off switch. Yeah. You know? So, you know, in summary, uh, yeah, I have to, yeah, I can see. So, so we give it up to my eighty yeah. percent. Yeah, I give that to your eighty percent. You win. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, um, yeah. On that note, in conclusion, <laughs> in conclusion, um, thank you so much for the question. It was anonymous, so whoever it was that you put that put that over, I do hope that somewhere in the middle of all this conversation here you found something that's helped you 
maybe not necessarily get past it, but definitely deal with it, process it, and then, and then formulate some sort of action plan as to how you may step past it. I'm never one that approves of snooping. I will say that from now. Testify. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not. However, I'm pro snooping. However, I do think that if you do suspect something, then confrontation is always the way to go about it. And just remember that there are different ways of confronting someone. Confronting in this day and age, people dictate that as being some sort of argument when actually confronting the situation is just simply facing it, taking a look at it and understanding it for what it is, asking questions. And, you know, as I say to everyone, I don't think anyone should lead into a relationship or be in a relationship with going, right, well, I could leave at any given point in time, but I do believe that you should always hold no deal as an option. And if someone does break your trust, whether you want to put it trust, faith, principles, parables, or foundations of your relationship, at some point in time, you need to take a look at it for yourself, your situation, your finances, your, your kids, and all the other bits and pieces across that spectrum and go, does it still work for me? And if the answer is no, then you need to be brave enough to confront that situation by working your way, whether that be through it, um, around it, but certainly out of it. Anyway, that's us out for this week. Cool. Unless you've got something else you want to add. No. <laughs> I don't have anything else to add, but um, we'll see you next week. Yeah, Charmaine won for our 80% this week. I'm coming back next week. But anyway, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. Don't forget, don't forget, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm a bit nervous for couple school after school for this one. Um, I think I might get sleep, but here we go. Um, couple school after school is 8.30 on a Tuesday, Instagram live. Don't forget to join us, talk to us, agree with us or disagree with us. Whichever one takes your fancy, we'll be there and we'll be ready for your questions. Confrontation <laughs> or advice. Anyway, that's out, for, that's out for this week. You take care, you stay strong, you stay focused. And see we'll you see later. you in the forwards. Peace.